if I could just ask you one more question, and it's a personal question. If you don't yeah. want to answer it, that, that, that's okay. You've, um, you've experienced losses that, that no parent should ever experience. I'm um, going to El Paso from here. Um, we'll likely be talking to family members whose child or sister or brother or mother or father has been killed. What, what, as someone who has been through that and lived through that and lives with that every day, what would you, what do you say to, to the people who are grieving right now? You understand it. You lost your brother. You understand. It's, uh, it literally, uh, it really takes a part of your soul. I mean, it, it is. Um, and what I tell people is that uh, um, it's going to take a long time, but the person you lost is still with you, still part of you. And uh, I, I, when it happened to me, when I got a phone call when I was in Washington, after I was elected, before I got sworn in, that my poor, they put a first responder on the phone, God love her, and said, you got to come home. There's been an accident. What happened? Attracted us. I said, they're dead. Your wife and daughter are dead and your sons. And I remember thinking to myself, my God. Well, I mean, I didn't, I just remember being so angry. Angry with everything. And I shouldn't say it, but angry with God. Just angry. And I remember, and people would come up to me and say, meaning well, after that, I understand. Hmm. And you feel like saying, you have no idea. You have no idea. You know they mean well. But the people who, in fact, have been through it, you know they understand. Hmm. And it gives you solace that they made it. They just, you just want to know, can I make it through? And I had an a older gentleman, 35 years my senior, a former elected official in the state of New Jersey, call me, former governor. And he said, I understand. I almost said to him, and he said, you know, I was walking home from lunch. I was the attorney general. And my wife came, uh, uh, a woman who helps out once a week came running across the mall saying, she's dead, she's dead, your wife just died. And I said, and I realized he did know. And he said, you know what I did? And my advice, it helped me anyway, is two things. One, he said, get a piece of graph paper and mark every single day how you felt from one to ten that day hmm. because you know I lost your brother when a thought would come to you after a while you'd be down and just as down as the moment it happened hmm. and he said don't look at it for six months mark it on the graph paper one to ten the downs will be just as far down but you know you're gonna make it when they get further and further and further and further apart you still get down it never goes away but it never goes away but but that's when you know you can make it. That's when you know you can embrace the family members that are left. That's when you know that you can make a contribution. It's like when I lost my son, um, Bo. I remember him saying to me, you know, I wrote a book about it, unfortunately. It was harder than I thought I was going to be able I wanted people to know what he was like. Yeah. And he looked at me when he... At, we'd go home and on Fridays to have dinner with him. He lived about a mile from us. And he asked his wife and his, to take the kids upstairs. And, uh, and my wife had gone home to change before she came back. We got right off the train. And he said, um, Dad, look at me, Dad. He said, I'm going to be okay no matter what happens. He knew he only had months to go. And, uh, and he said, but promise me, Dad. Promise me you'll be okay. And I said, Bo, I'll be okay. And I know people make fun of it, but we have a thing in our family. He said, Dad, promise me as a Biden. Give me your word as a Biden. You'll be okay. Because that's the sacred thing we do. And I said, I will, Bo. But I knew what he meant. He meant, Dad, don't do what you want to do. You want to turn inward. You want to just wall yourself off. You don't want to be part of it all. He just wanted me to make sure that the things that have animated my life, my whole life, I didn't walk away from. He knew I'd take care of the kids. He knew I would be there for the family. But it's the thing, the other thing I would strongly urge people, and they can't do it now. They just can't even think through the, the fog right now. But eventually, what will take you through is purpose. Find a purpose, something that matters, particularly if it's something connected to the loss you just had. And, uh, and so, I'm being too personal, but if, 
I get up in the morning and I think to myself in the morning, is he proud of me? Am I doing what he wants? And I'm sure that uh, it's the same way with you and a whole lot of other people. And, uh, but at a moment, there will come a time when you think of the person you lost, it takes a long while, where you get a smile before you get a tear. Hmm. And um, that's when you know you're gonna make it. And so many people have gone through what I've been through without the help I had. Think of all the heroes out there walking those streets today. Hmm. They get up every single morning. They put one foot in front of the other and they move. They move. My mom used to say the saying, it's from a Scottish philosopher, and the, the, the saying is, uh, be kind because everybody you meet is fighting a great battle. And exactly right. I think that's right. a really important thing. You know, and uh, you know, uh, um, Kierkegaard also said, faith sees best in the dark. Hmm. Sometimes it's really dark, hmm. but there is hope. And think about what it means for those family members you have left, they need you. They need you. And look, folks, uh, um, that's why I think that it matters, the stories of these people, for the public to understand that this is not just a statistic. This is, this is, this is who, who we are, who they are. I mean, it's a, and it really is about, you know, sort of reweaving that social fabric that holds a society together. Honesty, decency, hope, leaving nobody behind, giving hate no safe harbor. We don't always live up to, but that's, that, that's who we are. That's who we are. And it's the thing that holds us together. And, uh, and I don't see much of it coming from the far right and the bright parts of the world and, uh, and, and this administration. It's, uh, it's the uniqueness of America. Mr. Vice President, thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't mean to get so personal. No, I, I appreciate uh, it. Um, well. It helps. Well, you know, I mean, it's, I, it's, just, it's just amazing how it's, um, everybody knows who Donald Trump is. Hmm. We've got to let them know who we are, man. Even his supporters know who he is. They have no illusions about the basic fundamental character traits. I mean, it's, um, and I think, some, I think sometimes he thinks that uh, when we talk about this thing, that we talk about other people, like we're being suckers, you know, like we're not, take care of yourself. I mean, I, 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 I don't know, I, I don't, we, we let them know that uh, you know, we choose hope over fear, you know? Mm. Unity over division. And maybe most importantly, uh, truth over lies. It's, uh, it, it's, but we gotta make sure that, we're, not because I'm running, we gotta make sure that the American people understand, if you're, whoever you're trying to lead, that you mean what you say. There's some authenticity to it, mm. and it matters. And, you know as well as I do, it really matters.